Palestine in East Africa, where protests have erupted in Sudan after the Army Chief General Abdel Fattah al burhan appointed a new governing sovereign council that excludes the forces of Freedom and Change Alliance. Protesters block streets with barricades and rocks and some set tires alight. Some of the protests happened in Buri, a stronghold of pro-democracy demonstrations since the uprising that overthrew long-term leader Omar al-Bashir. This has led to the army tightening its defenses at the city's main intersections to prevent violent incidents. Now, join us this evening on NC Continental Prime. To discuss this is AGK Opa, a global affairs analyst based in Texas, the United States. Hello, AJK, good evening to you. Thank you, Wenger. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Now, AJK, how would you explain the latest twist in this ever-changing and evolving political situation in Sudan? Well, it's, it's very unfortunate what, what is going on in Sudan because, you know, from Sudan, we have Southern Sudan, you know, the newest country in the world is Southern Sudan, and that's as a result of, you know, the oppressive regime of, you know, the former uh, head of state of President Agad overthrown now. So uh, it, it, it's shocking that, you know, Africa, since it's gotten independence from whomever colonized it, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, hasn't been able to have stability, you know, or at least create a level of domestic governance to, to make sure that, you know, people within their own jurisdiction, you know, are lifted to higher standard of living. It's always been all this in time of strifes and, you know, some of it civil war. But at the end of the day, who, who is killing who? I mean, these are human beings that are, mm. are dying. So the Sudan situation is, is appalling. But then again, something happened in Guinea. And, and then, you know, not too long ago, it happened in Egypt. You know, so the West keep pitching uh, democracy to African countries, and African countries are weak. Democracy is a very complex set of government that most people are not able to. So the point is, whether they are in uniform or civilian clothes, these these are these are natives to these countries, and what they do to their own people, to their own nation, you know, is is, is awful. And I don't know what the solution is, but Africans need to start to look at themselves because the way they conduct their affair is why the rest of the world think that Africa is an unfortunate place. And everybody okay. steps in there and everybody do things because we do it ourselves. Africans are the worst enemies to themselves. So I don't know what the form of government is going to be, but Sudan, again, just goes to point to the fragile nature of the various people that rule or govern Africa. And at the end, they ruin it. Now, let's talk about uh, the current situation and uh, what happened today in Sudan. Uh, General Abdel Fattah uh, Burhan in the past had this power-sharing formula with uh, the former Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok. But today, he did not include any civilian member from the previous transition council in the new ruling council. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, the military wants to go alone. Well, I mean, again, what do you think? Yeah, he, he, I mean, you could look, I mean, if we're going to roll back the tape, you look at what happened in the case of uh, MK Abiola, you know, the promise made to him, you know, by the military. The military, you know, they, they're not, they're not a democratic institution. You know, they might say one thing and they end up doing something else. So it, it doesn't surprise me that the guy doesn't want to include anybody that he, mm -hmm. he, he, he promised he was going to include because, again, it's a consolidation of power. Anybody who wants to get into that kind of situation, going to bring around him, you know, people that they are going to be loyal and to the extent of their loyalty, who knows? But, you know, we sh that should not, that should not shock anybody. What, what, what people should be looking at, can he do anything to stabilize the country and then put it on a path whereby, you know, in the, near, in the foreseeable future, you know, maybe somebody can see some stability. I mean, look at what happened in Egypt. Aziz, well, you know, overthrew uh, Mubarak. And then the West, you know, including UN, everybody jump up and down. Now, the same West and the UK and US are reaching out to the guy who overthrew uh, Mubarak to see whether they can have stability in, in Sudan. So th that just tells you it's a game. You know, if you are you a player, are you a referee? The African people are players, and somebody else is, uh, is the referee calling the game on them. It's a shameful thing. I'm, and, I'm and happy, then, HK, I'm happy you mentioned the role of the international community. Now, despite pressure, international pressure, I mean, on Sudan's coup leader, uh, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, to return to the roadmap, the transition, 
he has even doubled down on what he has been doing. He has taken a more drastic action away from constitutional order. What does this mean for the Sudanese people? And uh, does international pressure really matter? No, no, international pressure is just a joke. It's a pure joke. I have lived in America now for more than 30 years. You know, I've participated and, you know, I've seen how things go. It's a joke until people take care of their home. And then when, when people begin to look at their country as their home, then the attitude will change. It wouldn't longer be always somebody else. You know, international people, I mean, international people have a, a say or an influence to the extent that the people are, are in those countries let them do. You know, I think... I think, you know, you know what the U.N. sometimes do or U.S. or anybody is, is pure joke because they have intelligence. You know, so they knew this thing. This guy just didn't wake up one day all of a sudden he's taking over. They knew somebody is to get at him or somebody encouraged him because maybe there's a guarantee. OK, if you don't do well, you know, get our embassy, we fly you to a safe country. So all I'm just saying is before somebody come into your home and destroy it is because they have looked you over and they think they can do it. But if you defend your home, even if you're having a problem with your wife or anybody, solve that within you before you start go inviting anybody. That's how countries survive. Who, do, do we, when America was having a challenge with the last election, did any foreign country come in here to tell them what nope. to do? Okay, so, so why are you letting them come and tell you what to do? Is it not the same people? Is, it, is there any university in the world a, a black person has not attended and graduated with some excellent degree? How come they cannot get it together once the degree is given to them? The same people that went to school who now end up working either in the State Department or, or UN that come to dictate to them what to do. Tell them go to hell. Tell them, no, we're not going to do it. This is how we're going to do it. Have yeah, they but told, uh, it, it doesn't really work like that uh, when it comes to geopolitics <laughs> and international relations. Uh, no country lives in does. isolation. And that's why it we have work. terms no, no, like superpowers. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example mm. it does work. Look at China. Look at Russia. Is yeah, but these telling? are superpowers. I'm sorry? They're at the same, almost at the same power. With the United States of America, but no, no, no. that's what I'm saying. You cultivate that. You develop the power. Power is not given to you. Some of this is bluffing. You have to learn how to bluff. But while you bluffing, you also have to have your house together. I mean, look at Libya. You know, when Gaddafi was out there talking about, it, he didn't have Libya. You know, stabilizing. You know, so this. What I'm saying is, before somebody comes into your home to challenge you to to the ownership and the sovereignty of your home, they have overlooked. They've looked at you, identified the weaknesses before they do it to you. If they figure out that you're stable, you can do it, they will they will find a way to deal, you know, negotiate with you favorably. I mean, look at China. Is China a democratic country? Is Russia? Mm. Is England the queen that everybody worships and bows to? Is she elected? Okay, AJK, just, just before we wrap things up now, my final okay, question is uh, this. Um, we've seen the diplomatic air force are not working, international pressure is not working, General Abdul Fattah uh, Burhan has even consolidated more power. So what's the way out of the current political crisis in Sudan, in your own no, opinion? The, the, the way out is the way out. You know, it's good. Nobody lives in isolation these days, okay? So you, you, you take it. But remember when advice is given, you have to choose which one you want. But I'm just saying, let there be a local content, look organic, you know, generated or developed solution by Sudanese. And looking at themselves, hey, who, who are you destroying? You're destroying yourselves. And, you know, the more of it you do to yourself, the more that people are going to be willing. So let the head of state, let the general, you know, look back and say, look, at the end of the day, you know, somebody might even overthrow him the next day. But how do you begin to bring people mm. to the table? What are the factions? What are the things that are causing this disruption? How can we harmonize? There are no perfect nations. What nations do is they work hard at things that may derail their national goal, you know, and they keep going. So, so I don't know what to say about Sudan, but Sudan should be a, you know, it, it should be a pointer to people. Mm. They, they divided themselves up and they're still having problems, you know, just like in Nigeria, that people pulling to tear the country apart. Cameroon is the same thing. Every African nation want to be apart, as if, if, even if you put all of them in the same tribe. Look at Somalia. Somalia is one nation, one religion, one, one language. How are they doing? So, government. 
government and governance is got to be the attitude of the people. You know, okay. we got to pull and push, and we got to yield. Sometimes you have to yield to a tough time in order to achieve the smoother time. Thank you very much, uh, AGK uh, Opa, Global Affairs Analyst. Uh, join us live from Texas, United States. We do appreciate your insights and candor on the subject. I think you should be on a, G, a, a GQ magazine. Thank you for hosting. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for your compliment.